Use the means of today to reach the people of today. The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, and the Bishops of the Philippines speaks about their apostolic letters and exhortations to all Catholic Christians. Pope to Rome's Faithful Synodality expresses the nature of the Church. Addressing the faithful of the Diocese of Rome, Pope Francis described the upcoming Synod with the theme for a Synodal Church, Communion, Participation, Mission, as a journey in which the whole Church is engaged. He noted that the Synod will take place between October 2021 and October 2023, and that the itinerary has has been conceived as a dynamism of mutual listening conducted at all levels of the Church, involving the whole, the people of God. The first stage of the process is the one concerning the individual diocesan churches. That is why I am here as your bishop to share, because it is very important that the Diocese of Rome commits itself with conviction to this journey, said the Pope. He explained that synodality expresses the nature of the Church, its form, its style, its mission. The word synod, in fact, contains everything we need to understand walking together. Referring to the book of Acts as the first, the most important manual of ecclesiology, the Pope noted that it recounts the story of a road that starts in Jerusalem and after a long journey ends in Rome. This road, he said, tells the story in which the Word of God and the people who turn their attention and faith to the Word walk together. Everyone is a protagonist, said the Pope. No one can be considered a mere extra. At times, it may be necessary to live to change direction, to overcome convictions that hold us back and prevent us from moving and walking together. The Pope noted that there are problems that arose in organizing the growing number of Christians and especially in providing to the needs of the poor. The way to find a solution, said the Pope, quoting the Book of Acts, is to gather the assembly of disciples together and make the decision to appoint those seven men who would commit themselves full-time to diaconia, meaning service of the tables. We shall continue this catechesis next Sunday. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other to see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, 
forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with Ricardo O. Santiago Sr., Steve G. Santiago and Family, Stu and Nancy Santiago and Family, Stephen and Joy Santiago and Family, Sally Mae Santiago Lim and Benedicto Lim Jr. and Family, Sunny Boy and Luella Santiago and Family, Mercy Evangelista and Family, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Family, Teresita Villa Abrile, T. Now Trucking Services, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Chardan, JDB Diversified Incorporated, Melvin E. Abilis, Quellans Food House, Mr. and Ms. Lucas B. Datoy and Family, Jess and Amelia Dison, Gus and Sophie, Mrs. Ampi Icasas and Family, Adolfo and Malu Ato, Purita and Lorenzo and Family, Fe Yamido and Family. Offering of the Holy Mass Accept Most Holy Trinity, this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the Divine Word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. Amen. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially this sponsoring group. Phoenix Petroleum Philippines Incorporated, Odena Corporation. Thanksgiving intentions, Nida Tumalip, Anonymous, Magdalena Kukam, Carlos Tan and Family, Salvador Family, Mr. and Ms. Manolito S.B. by Sr., Ahensha Kimsan Incorporated, Dabao Diamond Industrial Incorporated, Great Wall Trading, Ramline Resources Incorporated, Lani Diaz and Family. Good Health, Emeline and Nelio de la Peña, Germana Coquilla, Ernesto Aguilar, Lita Montalban, Mercy Evangelista, Linda and Erning Aguilar, Henry and Lolita Evangelista. Birthday Intentions, Dennis Oy, Charlize Donatella Oy, Nora Apostol, Rena Fimatigna, Ruby Lacno, Catherine Borla. Special Intentions Wedding Anniversary of Dennis and Sherlyn Oy, 26th Wedding Anniversary of Arnel and Janet Famador. Recovery and Healing of Email Season, Regina Cispedes, Julie Sanz, Linda Torrejos, Rudy Torrejos, Martin Castillo, Erlinda Aguilar. For the eternal repose of Rodolfo, Bernardo, Milagros, Luciana, Jermin, Erlinda, Claudio, Thelma, Marutas, Julio, Minandro, Sr., Anastasio, Filipa, Eduardo, Ernesto, Sr., Manuel, Renerio, Sr., Conrada, Adelaida, Leoncio, Damaso, Lourdes, Danilo, Ernesto, Luciano, Aurelia, 
and those who died of COVID-19, all the souls in purgatory, all deceased benefactors, sponsors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Media Mission. Prayer for the Sick Lord and Father, God without end and almighty, through your grace, you gave us strength and help in our weakness. In your mercy, touch your sick people, deliver them from their sicknesses, and restore their good health, so that assured of your goodness and love, they will praise and thank you in your holy name, through Christ our Lord. On this last Sunday of September, we thank the Lord for the many blessings He has granted us this month. He is a most generous God. At the same time, we are invited to grow spiritually by practicing magnanimity and rejecting the opposite. We are likewise challenged to set our priorities right and be prepared to pay the price that a proper scale of priorities entails. Since today is National Seafarers Day, we remember with special love and concern the 300,000 Filipinos who served in the domestic and international maritime industry. They work away from their homes so that their families may live a decent life and enjoy a better future. The presider of this Mass is Father Richie J. Gamaya, Director, Archdiocesan Social Communications Apostolate, Bible Apostolate, and Davao Catholic Herald. The choir during this Mass is the Harmonic Choir, San Pedro Cathedral Parish Choir, Davao City. Let us joyfully celebrate the banquet of love. Please stand as we start the Holy Mass. Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. God is absolutely free in the distribution of His gifts. Although He sets up ordinary channels for their distribution, He also acts outside these official structures. The First Reading A reading from the Book of Numbers The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the seventy elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men 
one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord be joy to the Lord. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them, yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially, restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the Lord. St. James reminds us today that the blessings we receive in this life are not meant for our selfish enjoyment but to enable us to do good to those in need. Failure to do so will be judged by God very severely. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth eaten your gold and silver have corroded and that corrosion will be a testimony against you it will devour your flesh like a fire you have stored up treasure for the last days behold the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The Word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. But Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, plug it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last Wednesday, I, as I listened to one of the nightly programs of DXGN on catechism with uh, Sister Rika as the main anchor, one of the questions raised consultation was that a friend of hers is a churchgoer who practices as she said, the piety of a Catholic, the practices of the Catholic. She knows how to pray the rosary. She goes to Mass. She gives help to those in need. And she believes in the teachings of the Catholic Church. However, the problem raised was that, but she is not yet baptized. What should she do as a friend in order to give advice to this practitioner of the Catholic faith, so to say, but is not yet baptized. Maybe if we heard this and our immediate response could be better if she should be baptized to force her to go to baptism. Second, maybe we would comment what should she practice catholic observances when in fact she is not yet baptized maybe in our in our narrow mindedness we would be tempted either to let her go from the catholic church or to force her to be baptized the beautiful thing was that one of the anchors a priest said i admire her religiosity and her goodness that she shows to others despite she is not yet baptized and that secondly it is recognized that even if she is not baptized by doing good deeds by following the precepts of the lord as we have heard in the responsorial psalm the precepts of the lord give joy to the heart this is already enough for us to say continue your good work however let us wait for a time when she is ready to receive the sacrament especially the sacrament of baptism so let us not force her but encourage her to continue doing good and help her prepare to receive the faith 
through the sacrament of baptism. And this is one of the concrete examples of the center of the message of our readings today, which reminds us of being open-minded, being tolerant of the goodness of others, and refrain from being narrow-minded ourselves, refrain from being jealous ourselves, refrain from being envious ourselves. Why? What are the fruits of avoiding being narrow-minded, of being open-minded, of being tolerant with others? First, of course, this would free us from self-torment. Why? As they will say, the jealous are troublesome to others, but a torment to themselves. The jealous are troublesome to others, but a torment to themselves. This is what happened in the first reading when Moses shared, God let the Holy Spirit descend and be enjoyed by the 70 elders, but it happened that two of them, Eldad and Medad, were not there. And so someone who was in his young age was with Moses through all those years, protested and said, why should they prophesy when in fact they did not go out from the tent and come with us? But Moses said, how I wish the Lord would make all his people prophesy before all others. Are you envious because God is so generous with his Holy Spirit? You know, my dear brothers and sisters, this protest comes from a heart which does not only look for trouble because he sees the goodness of God in others. Because others can manifest God's goodness to his people. This is also a self-torment. Why? Because the moment we do not allow the good to work in others, the moment we become narrow-minded and just think we monopolize the spirit, we monopolize goodness, it will be always heavy for us. It is better if we will be many, if there are many who will work for the kingdom of God. And so my dear brothers and sisters, why become jealous to others if we see others are more blessed? If we see that we deserve more, that we should receive more, especially during this time of the pandemic, sometimes we become jealous because we would say, why is it that there is also assistance for them when in fact I should receive more? Why is it that they are also given support in this time of crisis when in fact they can afford. Maybe, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not torment ourselves more. Let us not look for more trouble, but allow the goodness of the Lord, the goodness of others to be manifest in each one of us. So instead of being jealous, be settled and be grateful with what you have received and recognize the goodness of others as a manifestation of God's goodness to us. Secondly, what is the fruit of avoiding being narrow-minded, of avoiding being jealous and envious? It makes us blessed. We will be blessed. We will be happy if we refrain from being narrow-minded. There is a saying which goes, Blessed is he who has learned to admire but not envy, to follow but not imitate, to praise but not flatter, and to lead but not manipulate. I repeat, Blessed is he who, learn, who has learned to admire but not envy, to follow but not imitate, to praise but not flatter, and to lead but not manipulate. You know, what happened in the letter of James, as we have heard in the second reading, is that those who have been blessed materially, those who say they are blessed because of the riches, the wealth that they have, they were warned because even those material riches 
is not the end of all. It's not the be all and end all of everything. Why? Even money, even material possessions, this will also be gone. This will also be destroyed. This will not last. In fact, in the second reading, we were even reminded that the rich people manipulate and try to kill others because of their power, because of their riches. But the Lord protected them. Maybe, my dear brothers and sisters, when we think we have more, when we think we can do more, when we think we are blessed, instead of manipulating others, instead of taking advantage over others because we have more, we can do more, why not challenge ourselves? Can I be more? The havings, the doings, the influence that we have is not a guarantee of our being, of our identity, of the true selves that we are. So my dear friends, let us not rely only on what we have received, but work more to become that which the Lord has called us, to manifest His love for others by not manipulating, by not flattering, by not controlling others. Instead, let us be grateful for the blessings we received. And lastly, if we are not narrow-minded, if we are tolerant with others, if we are open-minded with the blessings, with the goodness of others as a manifestation of God's goodness and love to us, we will also exude true confidence in us. We will not feel insecure. True confidence. Why? This is what happened in the Gospel reading when John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. <laughs> the reply of Jesus was, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. So Jesus challenged John, Allow those who in their own way can also do what we do. Let us not manipulate the Holy Spirit's goodness in our lives. If they can sing well, let it be. If they can preach well, let it be. If they have prayed well, let it be. If they have served others well, let it be. If they have helped the poor, let it be. It is not only us, but others can also do what we usually do for the good of others. Instead, let us guard our sinfulness and not cause others, especially the little ones, to commit sin. And this is what he said in the gospel. Jesus challenged us, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. In other words, instead of looking at the, at the mistakes of others, instead of being jealous and envious because others are better than us, others are more handsome or more beautiful than us, because others are more recognized than us, because others are more blessed than us according to our, our own view, let it be. But concentrate, focus on what you have, focus on your giftedness, and offer it to the Lord. Because if we keep on being envious and jealous at others, we will not exude true confidence in us. That is why, mother, brothers and sisters, in all of this, let us always be open-minded. Let us be tolerant with others, knowing that each of us can be an instrument of God's goodness. It is said, true confidence has no room for jealousy and envy. When you know you are great, you have no reason to hate. I repeat, true confidence 
has no room for jealousy and envy. When you know you are great, you have no reason to hate. And so my dear friends, in this Holy Eucharist, in a special way, let us also remember those who are at sea, who are far from the families, the seafarers, who may be tempted to be envious and jealous at times because they are away from their families. We pray for them that the Lord may strengthen them. We pray for their families left here so that they may also be intact and be united at all times. Let us now all together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, because of such and with the Father, through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's readings remind us to live in the light of God's law and to overcome all forms of narrow-mindedness. Aware of our weakness in meeting these demands, we humbly pray, Lord God, be merciful to your people. that all Christians may always be ready to cooperate with all honest people in promoting whatever is good and constructive. Let us pray. That the leaders of our communities may be as open-minded like Moses and Jesus in discerning the work of the Spirit even outside the official structures of the church. Let us pray. Lord God, be merciful to your people. That our seafarers and their families may remain faithful to their Christian commitment and preserve the bond of mutual love in spite of their physical separation. Let us pray. Lord God, be merciful to your people. That employers and government officials may give what is due to their employees and constituents, let us pray. Lord God, be merciful to your people. That all of us may realize that the wealth and blessings that God gave us are meant not to be hoarded, but to be shared, especially with those in need. Let us pray. Lord God, be merciful to your people. That all the deceased brothers and sisters may be admitted to the joys of eternal life in heaven, especially the victims of COVID-19, the deceased members of the sponsors, benefactors, and cooperators of the Pauline's Medium Mission. Let us pray. Lord God, be merciful to your people. Lord God, teach us to rejoice in the good of others and to join hands with them in promoting the values of the kingdom 
which your son came to establish, you who live and reign forever and ever. this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. So Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation, we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, and Romulo our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For those who cannot receive Holy Communion, we pray the Spiritual Communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now, you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart. Detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things, because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Meaningful Values for God's Children This colorful storybook that is meant to be narrated by parents to their children or by teachers to their young students will help the latter understand better that every experience they have is only temporary and that every difficulty or situation they encounter has a solution if it is taken with a positive attitude. As they go deeper into its story, children will be introduced into knowing the value to be always optimistic in life. Meaningful Values for Children Available at the Pauline's Media Center, Bolton Street, Davao City, Philippines at 165 per copy. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.